Here's five crazy stories that happened to me back in the 80s. And who knows? Maybe they happened to you too. Oh. Welcome back to the Junk Room, everybody. It's me, the Junk Man, coming back at you with a whole new, brand new video. What are we going to talk about today? Well, I'm going to give you five stories about some little adventures or a little bit of fun I had back in the 80s. You know, when kids left their house. They went to play in the woods, ride their bicycle, uh, always get the email when I'm trying to talk to you guys. But you know, kids used to leave the house and have little adventures and stuff before they started playing video games all day and looking at porn on the computer. You know, back in the old days when you had to find porn in the woods hidden under a rock. Believe me, we found a lot of porn magazines back in the woods. Still not sure how they got there, but you would find them. Anyway, before we look at these five stories, as always, you want to support this channel, click up here or in the description below, become a Patreon supporter. There you get a lot of exclusive content, and it's a lot of fun. If you want to support another way, go over to thatjunkman.com and buy some cool t-shirts like this one right here, and you can be wearing it by the end of the next week. Now let's get on to the video. Now, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know, at times I like to go a little bit off topic with maybe the theme of this channel, although there's really no theme to this channel. And I'm not expecting this one to get many views because a lot of you probably saying, hey, this has nothing to do with toys I've never seen or anything to do with Star Wars. So you're going to click off pretty soon. But I hope you don't. I hope you listen to these stories and maybe share some of your stories below. And or maybe these stories sound familiar to you because they happened to you or your friends back in the 80s, back when kids would leave the house, you know, before they started playing. Oh, I said that already. Okay, let's get started with story number five. This one here happened in the late 80s when me and my brother Bo was skinny dipping down the local pond. While we were skinny dipping, that's a whole nother video right there. But we were skinny dipping when these two crooks stole our clothes. That's right, they stole all of our clothes and stole our car. What were we gonna do? We couldn't chase after them. We didn't have anything on but our birthday suits. So, they fled off in our car. Luckily, there was a speed trap down the road, and the local sheriff chased the car thinking it was us. He was always trying to get, he was always trying to arrest us, like give us speeding tickets. Anyway, they chased them into another pond. They jumped into a pond, that's right. Now, you're thinking this is where the story ends. They got the crooks, they got the car back, it's all over. But nope, this is kind of where it begins. The sheriff couldn't find the bodies of the guys that jumped in the river. Did they swim away? Did they get away? What happened to them? We don't know. But, turns out the local sheriff thought it was me driving the car and my brother. So, they declared us dead. That's right, they said I was dead. And then, the local commissioner said we stole his gold watch. Can you believe that? Being that he thought we were dead, he thought he could get away with saying we stole his gold watch as part of an insurance scam. He almost got away with it until we hitched a ride with a local audio repair guy back in the town. It was a really crazy weekend, I tell you that. Now, number four. This one may be early 90s and not the actual the 80s. It was about 2 o'clock in the morning. I ran out of gas out near the desert and I had to hitchhike to the local town. I was standing there in the road with my thumb pointed up and when this guy picked me up out of the blue, I was thankful. It was really dark. It was like 1 o'clock in the morning and luckily this guy picked me up. I got in the car kind of nice guy we had a little small talk and then he put on some ccr and we both jammed out the midnight special it was real i really loved that song that was until his tape deck ate his cassette tape then we had nothing to do i mean this was before the internet i didn't have a phone to play with and the radio wouldn't pick up anything so we didn't have anything to do so what did we do well we made up a game where we each would take turns doing a famous tv theme song while the other one tried to guess it <sighs> I can't remember all the ones he did, but I know he did one to National Geographic's theme song, which I didn't even know they even had, and I couldn't, I couldn't really, and I couldn't figure that one out, so I lost the game. Uh, then down the road, he wanted to show me something really scary, and that's the day I learned you never hitchhike. Yes, it was really, really scary. So now let's go to number three. This is about one of my first jobs. I got a job at a local five and dime thanks to the boss, Mr. McGee, who, to be honest with you, didn't really like me. He didn't like my kind. I think he thought I was lazy or something. Anyway, one day I was doing something what I normally do, nothing at all, when all of a sudden this beautiful woman walked in through the outdoor. She was gorgeous. She was wearing almost nothing. Oh, well, except for a raspberry beret. It was the first person I ever saw, other than Reed Run, wearing a beret. She asked me if I planned to do her any harm and really don't even know what she meant by that, but of course I didn't. 
but we left the store together. I put it on the back of my bike and we headed out to old Mr. Johnson's farm. Now, I would tell you what happened to that farm, but really not for kids, so we better not talk about that. But it was nice. You could hear the sound of the rain hitting the barns and the horses was probably wondering who we were. Felt like a movie star that day. But let's go on. You don't want to hear that. This is a family video. What are we up to? Number three? No, we did number three. Number two. This one takes place probably in the mid 80s when my friend Jeremy was put into a mental institution. That's right. They thought my friend Jeremy had autism or something. This was back before they peeled up kids when they just threw him in a nut house. Anyway, I couldn't let my friend be taken away like that. Me and him escaped and we headed out to California. On the way to California, we met this very cool girl named Haley, and we learned that Jimmy was a great player at video games. So we entered him into the annual Armageddon Video Game Championship. Also on the way, we met this cocky, snobby douchebag who kept telling us how badass the Nintendo Power Glove was. Didn't look all that fun to me. You had to put all this stuff on your TV. Didn't look like it worked like crap, but he kept telling us over again how badass it was. We made it to California to the championship, and Jimmy made it all the way to the final, where he was one of only a few to get to play Super Mario Bros. 3 long before anyone else. It was amazing. This is the first time I saw anything from that game, and if you grew up in the 80s, you know how much we all love Super Mario, so it was great seeing scenes from Super Mario 3. I still don't understand how Jimmy found that warp whistle inside the castle where you have to fly up and over. I mean, it's not something you just find out on your own, and being that we, none of us knew about Super Mario Bros. 3 because the game wasn't out yet, how would, he know so, how would he know to find something so obscure like that? But that's Jimmy for you. He was a very good video game player. And that brings us to the final story of this video. And it's probably the strangest of them all. It was about the time my bicycle was stolen when I rode it down to Randy's bike shop to pick up a new horn that I had special ordered. And I stopped by the local trick shop to buy a few little tricks. I always like to have tricks in my back pocket. You know, hot gum, sweet and sour gum, goggles that make you see at night or a boomerang bow tie, I always like to have something handy. But when I came out of the bike shop, my bicycle was gone. Now my first thought is that my rich, snobby neighbor next door stole it, being that earlier that day he was trying to buy it from me. Everyone loved my bike and I wasn't gonna sell it. Apparently he didn't take it, so I had nowhere to turn. So I went to the local fortune teller who looked in the crystal ball and saw that my bicycle was actually in the basement of the Alamo. That's right, the basement of the Alamo. Being I had no bicycle and no car, I started to hitch across America looking for my bicycle. I mean, I really love this bicycle. To make a long story short, there's no basement in the Alamo. I did learn how to say Adobe, and my bicycle ended up on the set of a big Hollywood movie starring that kid from Wonder Years. No, not Fred Savage, his older brother. It was a crazy adventure, but at the end, I did get my bicycle back, and I made a lot of new friends along the way. It sure was better than that time a tornado blew a circus into my backyard with Chris Christopherson. But that's a whole different story right there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed these five adventures I had as a kid. Tell me about some adventures did you have. Did you have any cool adventures like this? As always, subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up, ring the bell, do all that stuff. And we'll be back again with a whole brand new video. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.